What's up, everybody? This is Info Media Reacts. Uh, I want to let everybody know that I thank you. I appreciate you for supporting the channel, uh, watching the videos, giving the channel views. I appreciate everybody. But let's get into the subject right now. This is going to be polarizing, folks. What I'm about to talk about, it's going to tr trigger some folks, going to make some folks mad. Some people are going to agree. Some people are going to disagree. But I want you to leave honest comments in the comment section of this video. Now, not too long ago, um, Uncle Luke, and we know him as Uncle Luther Campbell of the two live crew back in Florida during the late 80s and 90s. Uh, some believe that he's responsible for this twerking music that we're listening to today. Uh, when we're seeing women twerking, that that was Luke Campbell, Uncle Luke, uh, put women in his videos, exploited them sexually, the whole nine yard. That there's some people that believe that he is the one in his group that contribute to this. That's a side note here about what we're about to talk about, because recently uh, Uncle Luke had some things to say about FBA that can be seen as disrespectful and it also makes one wonder why people delineate themselves based on their culture their language and where they come from now let's break this down fba is foundational means foundational black americans and i want to be fair here there are those that identify as freemen or ados american descendants of slavery so we have various black people in America that have the truth. delineated themselves based on their culture, background, uh, belief systems, things that we've gone through because black people born here in America, that's our history is unique and maybe the most unique history because like many immigrants, we didn't hop on a plane or a boat and say, hey, I wanna go over to America to make it big or to go to school. Our ancestors were put into shackle slavery and made slaves mistreated for hundreds yeah, of years. Truth. And then when black people fought to get out of slavery, we went from slavery into reconstruction, into black codes, Jim Crow. And of course they took advantage of black men who were working as sharecroppers, which is just another form of slavery. Jim Crow was another form of slavery, as well as uh, black codes. Black Americans fought in every war that this, e this country has ever had, from the Revolutionary War, every single war. Black people have built this country with our hands, starting with yeah, agriculture in this country, building the infrastructure of this society, the slave trade, the triangular slave trade, which brought black, black Americans uh, black people here to this country we call America is the economic feud that brought black um, bl brought America to the top of the heat. So we ha we have a history and we have something that we can uh, center ourselves around that makes us unique, just as everyone else that comes yeah, here. And they delineate themselves by their flag, by their language, by their culture, what they eat, what they like to do. OK, but there's been a clash ever since black Americans have decided to delineate themselves. We have other groups, whether it be black people that come from the diaspora of the world of places like the like the Caribbean, the West Indies, things of that nature. And then you have black people who come from the continent of Africa, various countries from over there who come over here. And sometimes there's a clash. Sometimes there are. Uh, black people that come from other countries that can be uh, disrespectful to black Americans. And this is how you have these, uh, these rifts. Okay. Um, th this is a contributing factor. Now, I believe if I'm not mistaken, uh, uncle Luke is either Jamaican or Caribbean himself. So he feels some kind of way about the things that he said, but it was, it, it appeared to be disrespectful as he dished and he sort of uh, talked bad about those that are part of the FBA movement by saying that, hey, FBA, they spend all this time on the Twitter or X spaces 
uh, and he and he called out Tariq Nasheed as a culprit of this, what he calls creating division between the black community. Now, one of the reasons why it appears that Uncle Luke is saying these things, and I'm going to play the video for you in just a moment, is that Uncle Luke is a strong supporter of Kamala Harris. He's been pushing the Kamala Harris Kool-Aid, okay? And there are black people that are saying, and particularly black men, that, hey, I can think for myself and decide who I want to vote for and who I don't want to vote for. And Uncle Luke, not too long ago on his Instagram, made an Instagram video in which he was urging black men to come on home and vote for the Democratic Party. And particularly, you got to vote for Kamala Harris. We know that D.L. Hoogley has been pushing this narrative and many, many others within the celebrity world. But the reality is, is that black people are not monolithic. We don't all think alike and we can come to our own conclusions, our own opinions, our own political thoughts and beliefs. And I'm going to say to you, you should never vote for anybody, whether it be the Democrats or the Republican Klan, if they don't have a plan and a policy that's direct for black people, not indirect, not what you're going to do for people of color. What are you going to do for black people specifically? Kamala Harris has to put to provide that and as well as Donald Trump has to provide that too. That's my side note on that. But I want your thoughts on this, everybody, as I go into Uncle Luke's video, and I want you to let me know in the comment section of this video, do you agree with Uncle Luke? Do you disagree? Do you think he took it too far in the things he said about Tariq? He got into saying that Tariq has a white uh, wife, when we know that he does not have a white wife, he has a white mother-in-law because his his wife is uh, what we would call biracial. And we have many black people within uh, black America who have a white mother, maybe a black father and so on and so forth. So we know these things are, are reality. And we have black people who have who have a light skin tone because of what may yeah, have true. happened many years ago in the slave quarters when black people were slaves and black women were being sexually abused by white slave masters. So that's a small, that's a piece of history. Another piece of history that I must lay down for everybody before we get to this video is that in, uh, we have the civil rights movement and the areas of the civil rights movement that you must pay much strong attention to is the area around 1965. What's significant about 1965? Well, that's when LB signed the Voters' Right Act, which allowed black people, way before other people got here, to be able to vote. On top of getting that passed, it was people like Tell the truth. Martin Luther King Jr. and many other leaders like him who were pushing civil rights, pushing to open the door, not only for black people in America that were here and have lineage here, but black folks all over the world who were able to come in because it was because of the civil rights movement, specifically around the 1965 era in which we got the right to vote as black Americans. That's what opened the door to immigration that allowed Africans, Caribbeans, black people in the diaspora to be able to come over here. This is a fact. A law was passed because of the pressure that black leaders put on the government here, which opened the door. Prior to that history, white people in America only wanted Europeans to be able to come over here and get citizenship. Yeah, true. We're talking about being able to get citizenship, not just coming over here, visiting, working, but being able to also get citizenship. They only wanted Northern Europeans and other Europeans to come over here. But after the night, after the civil rights movement around 1965, things changed, laws were passed, and now they could no longer use a quota system to only bring Europeans, white Europeans over here. Now they had to allow for Africans, Jamaicans, Caribbeans, and everyone else, Asians and what have you, to be able to come over and petition for what? Citizenship. This is a little bit of a history that needs to be told, folks. So let's go into the reaction studio and let you hear what uh, Uncle Luke had to say. Um, it is polarizing. It is, uh, it is something. Let's go over here right now. Okay. Here's Uncle Luke. Here's what he had to say, and I will have to stop it from time to time. That's a group of black men 
And most of them hang out on Twitter. Tariq Nasheed. Uh, oh my God. I yeah. do not like him. You know, I swear, I feel like he's an agent. An agent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At the end of the day, they get on there, they, they fool these people with these doctors and these books and all that. And uh, they, try and, they try and separate the black community. Mind you. Now, do you agree or disagree with Uncle Luke that uh, people like Tariq and many others uh, within the FBA movement um, are dividing and conquering the black community and creating division? This is what Uncle Luke is saying here. And you also heard his lady friend. I don't know if she was, if she's his, his girlfriend, wife, whatever his status is. But she made a statement in which she believes that Tariq Nasheed is an agent. Now, I've heard people say this, that they believe is an agent. What do you believe? It is not my, I'm not setting up here taking any sides uh, in this area because I'm going to tell you how I get down. Uh, for me, I think for myself, I don't let any one man or any one person uh, dictate how I think and how I talk and how I can have critical thinking skills to think for myself. Uh, last time I checked, we don't really have any real black leaders anymore in the 21st century. Gone are the days of a Malcolm X, or even a Dr. King for that matter. We don't have those type of individuals anymore who are willing to sacrifice themselves for black people in the name of the cause and for what they believe in. We have a lot of what we have today is a lot of talkers but we don't really have people that are willing to sacrifice themselves for the movement. Okay. So Malcolm X is gone. We don't have those kind of guys um, anymore. I just have to, that's my footnote to this situation that I have to put down. I have to say, I have to be honest about this. Let's can, let's hear some more. Here's the guy I'm talking about descendants of slaves, you know, uh, marriage of, a white lady, you know, which I'm like, are y'all following him? You know what I'm saying? So I like, I Let's like stop I, it right there. Let's stop it right there. Tariq Nasheed had, I got to make this clear. Tariq Nasheed claps back at Uncle Luke in making this statement because Tariq Nasheed has already made it clear that his wife is not white. So let's show you where Tariq Nasheed actually did clap back on this particular uh, area in which Tariq Nasheed said these statements right here. This is Tariq Nasheed on his Twitter or X pages. He said, Luke, do you and other non-FBAs have, have the same smoke for the Democrats who actually um, prosecuted those innocent men? Now, I want to come back to this because this is the area right here. Let me correct myself right here. This is where Tariq Nasheed called, because I'm going to come to that very soon. Tell the truth. This is where Tariq Nasheed really called out Uncle Luke, okay? He says, he says, Un he says, Uncle Luke Real is out here shilling for his fellow Caribbean immigrant, Kamala Harris, and Luke told a lie that I'm married to a white woman if you are reduced to lying to get people to vote, you are in bad shape. So he lied saying that Tariq Nasheed is married to a white woman when in fact his wife is biracial. His mother-in-law, to be honest, is a white woman. But Tariq Nasheed had to correct him on saying these things that he just said. Let's continue and I'm gonna get back to that other clip that I had up originally of what Tariq Nasheed had also said to him. Let me play this some more. I trolling them. I get in these debates with them and I troll them. I was like. So Uncle Luke is saying he likes trolling Tariq Nasheed. He's admitting that he likes to troll and create drama with Tariq Nasheed in these Twitter spaces. <laughs> you know, which I'm like, are y'all following him? You know what I'm saying? So I like, I like, I like trolling them. I get in these debates with them and I troll them. I was like, so how you feel about Minister Farrakhan? Mm. He can't speak for you. 
Ooh. He's Jamaican. He's got Jamaican ancestry. I'm like, his parents, his parents are from the islands. Mm -hmm. Hello. I, I, I want to stop it right there. Uh, it is true that um, Farrakhan's family is from the islands. I believe he said Jamaican. I believe Farrakhan's family may be from the West Indies. I could be wrong. Correct me in the comment section of this video if you know different. But um, basically what Uncle Luke is doing here is he's saying, how can you all uh, create this division within the black community uh, and separate yourself and delineate yourself at the same time, celebrate people like a Farrakhan whose family comes from the islands. He comes from the islands. And then you also uh, look up to someone like a Malcolm X, whose mother uh, also comes from the island. I think his mother, Malcolm X's mother, may be um, from the West Indies as well. I could be wrong. Correct me again. But we know that Malcolm X's father, who was a Garveyite, is a Black American uh, lineage. So he would be what you would identify as a freeman, a, an, an ADOS or a FBA. So we know that right there, okay? Um, but Uncle Luke is trying to call uh, folks out here, particularly Tariq Nasheed. Tariq Nasheed does clap back and telling him, fool, <laughs> my wife is not uh, a white woman. And he also talks about Marcus Garvey. Now we know that Marcus Garvey this is what's interesting about Uncle Luke saying what he says about, well, what about uh, uh, Marcus Garvey? Now, everybody knows that Marcus Garvey is from Jamaica. We already know that he's not an FBA and Freeman or an ADOS. We know he came over here to America, particularly to places like New York, uh, telling uh, black people to leave America and go to Africa. We also know that Marcus uh, Garvey uh never stepped foot in Africa himself, which I find very interesting, by the way. But he brings up Marcus Garvey, which we all know that Marcus Garvey is not an FBA a person or an ADOS person or a Freeman person. I just wanted to emphasize that. Let's hear some more of what Uncle Luke is saying. Do you agree or disagree with him? And I said, what about Marcus Garvey? Oh, no, Malcolm X. Malcolm X. What about Malcolm X? Yes. And then they go like, oh, 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 oh. I'm like, so here are black men that put their life on the line. So you're, you're going to give them these derogatory terms. Now we know that these black men, particularly the Malcolm X's of the world have put their life on, 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 uh, on the line and nobody's going to disrespect, uh, what someone like a Malcolm X did or even uh, the things that Farrakhan has done. Now, people have mixed feelings about Farrakhan because people believe that, hey, he was uh, partially responsible for what happened uh, at the end of the day to Malcolm X. That's a whole other story right there to talk about for another day. But I also want to put this up right here because as Uncle Luke goes on with saying what he has to say about Tariq and the whole FBA movement, um, I need to put this up on the screen because this is very important. This is what I was about to read the first time. During this whole back and forth, as I said, Tariq went back and forth with Luke Campbell in the Twitter spaces. Yeah, the truth. And here's another one again where Tariq Nashi says to Luke, Luke, do you and other non-FBAs have the same smoke for the Democrats who actually prosecuted those innocent men and had them unjustly in prison? He's talking about, um, we got to be honest here, he's talking about the Central Park Five. These brothers right here Tell who were truth. at the Democratic Convention. And because Uncle Luke is sort of pushing the narrative that uh, black men need to vote for the Democratic Party and vote for Kamala Harris and get off the fence, um, Tariq Nasheed, I think, tried to was snapping back at him by saying, well, you do know that it was the Democrats in New York that prosecuted the Central Park Five. But this is the thing. He's right. New York is a Democratic city. It's run by the blue. And I'm sure that Democrats, whether it be Democratic lawyers and judges and what have you, and, 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 and were, had something to do with 
the prosecution of these innocent black men. But I'm going to be honest, and honesty needs to be. We know for a fact that these five black men have said consistently on and off media and on social media and have said in interviews and even said at the Democratic convention that just passed that they blame Donald Trump. They look at him as partially, if not completely responsible for the crazy absence fear in New York in which people were saying, execute those, those black men. And it was Donald Trump who put up a $80,000 ad pushing forth the narrative that he wanted those five black men to be executed. He pushed it out in the media and he was well, people looked up to Donald Trump at that time. He was a rich guy, rich kid, rich man who's never worked a day of his life, hard labor in his life. And he was asking for these black men to be executed. So this very day, every since they have been found completely innocent of the crime, Donald Trump has never come forth openly to apologize to these five black men. And to this day, they hold him as responsible as they would surely hold the Democratic or the legal system that is run by Democrats in New York. So let's just get that out the way the truth. before we start trying to say, well, it was the Democrat. No, they also blame Donald Trump as well. And matter of fact, Donald Trump at that time, I'm going to bust some people's bubbles. Donald Trump at that Tell time the defined himself as a Democrat because remember, Donald Trump voted for Bill Clinton and was a big supporter. Okay. And Donald Trump was a big supporter at one time of Kamala Harris writing her a check when she ran for office back in the, in San Francisco, the Bay area. Hmm? I bet y'all didn't know that. So remember Donald Trump would be one of those Democrats that Tariq Masheed is talking about that contribute to this whole situation with these young men. That's the central park five. I got to say that and be real with that because of what Tariq had the truth. written here in his rebuttal to Uncle Luke. Uncle Luke in his rebuttal says to Tariq, here you go with the FBA. Your daddy Donald Trump did this to the FBAs. You all still staying with him. You guys got to be getting paid. This is what Luke Campbell is saying. But Luke Campbell is partially correct here. Donald Trump did contribute to what happened to those young men, just as the Democrats in New York. And like I said before, uh, come on, y'all. At that time, Donald Trump wasn't this mega personality that he is today. He wasn't a Republican. Donald Trump was a Democrat himself at the time. Tell the truth. Just wanted to break that down because truth must be told. Tell the truth. Now, let's hear the rest of what Uncle Luke is saying here. In terms of names, say that. Right. Say, say that loud. And they, and they get choked up. And how we are, as well, you know, it's it's all races of people that, that are easily to be influenced by bad actors. He's talking all this stuff, telling other black people who they're not, right? But you housing, uh, you know what I'm saying? This Caucasian woman, which is the mother of his mixed wife, right? Right there in the house, paying for her whole lifestyle. Like, make it that he's getting money. Now, I stop it there. The young lady or lady friend at Tone that uh, Luke, Uncle Luke is talking to, makes some interesting statements here saying that you've got a whole white woman living in a house with you that you're taking care of and putting in a lifestyle as you're talking about, well, we know Tariq often talks about white supremacy, racism, and that he's has no problem race baiting people about what white society has done to black people. And it is true that white supremacy has, has impacted black people in this country, but it also impacts black people globally around the world. Okay. Now I want to also say this within black America, black people born here lineage here. Uh, we have a word that we use called raccoon or, uh, uncle Tom, where we call out black people amongst our group who sell us out. Now we know the that truth. the word tether is a word that is being used and 
most people within the FBA movement will say that we that they, 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 they use that term for black immigrants that come over and try to undermine black American lineage people. And we know that in the continent of Africa, I believe in Nigeria, somewhere of that nature, tell me if I'm wrong or right, they have a word for black people that's derogatory called uh, uh, Lakata. Lakata, I, I don't know if I'm saying that correct, but they have words and terms in which they describe us in negative waves. At the end of the day, um, it doesn't help any of us to be against each other because at the end of the day, those in power, white supremacists, uh, white power structures, I think they would sit back and enjoy seeing black people, no matter where we are in the world, at each other's throats because at the end of the day, they win and we lose. But I must say this, that other groups of people do delineate to who they are, their culture, their flag, and I do think a part of me does recognize that other groups of black people who come here as immigrants and come from other parts of the world, they do have an attitude about black Americans delineating ourselves. I do find that to be quite interesting. And it shows you um, that when we begin to um, take control of who we are and our identity and our culture, other people, groups of people who almost who damn near look like us too um will have a problem with it so this shows you that you can have black skin but you can come from different parts of the world and have a different mindset just because someone's black does not mean they have we ha we all have the similar same mindset you must keep that in mind okay she's saying that Tariq Nasheed is getting money from black americans who support him while keeping his white mother-in-law in a certain level of luxury. This is what she's saying here. Once again, do you agree or disagree with what Tone Luke, what, what not Tone Luke, excuse me, everybody, boo-boo. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Luke, Luther Campbell, Uncle Luke, do you agree or disagree with everything that uh, Uncle Luke has said in the female that he had on that he was talking to, do you agree or disagree? Uh, let me know in the comment section of this video by, um, you know, giving comments. Give good comments, folks, because I'm curious to see what everyone else's perspective is on this very issue. Okay. Let me take this off of here. Let's go back over to the a regular studio here. I really appreciate everybody. This has been uh, quite, um, quite an issue. Once again, uh, Tariq Nasheed, as you can see right there, calls him out, <laughs> calls out Uncle Luke for the things that he said. And then he also called him out for talking about he had a white wife when in fact, no, his wife is biracial. It's the mother-in-law who is white. Um, but, this is all wrapped up into this whole issue around trying to support. This is what this is really all about. Luke Campbell is trying to push the narrative that black men in particular, black people need to be on board with the Democrats and Kamala Harris. This is where a lot of this is coming from um, as he tries to call out uh, black people who are on Twitter spaces that are coming together to talk about issues that is related to their lineage, their background. So folks, I thank you all again for watching this program. Let me do this as I really appreciate you all, but I want you to do this. I want to say subscribe to the channel. I also want to say thank you for watching this video. Yeah, Share it in all your social media. Comment in the comment section of this video. Share this video on all your social media. Share it with your friends. It's a very polarizing topic um, that I know a lot of people, it's going to get under their skin. They're not going to be, some people are going to be happy. Some people are going to agree with him, disagree with him. It's a polarizing issue, but it's one that I wanted to, I wanted to examine and I wanted to get your opinions about what you think about what Uncle Luke is saying and the fact that uh, Tariq Nasheed clapped back at him and um, had to set 
a few things straight with uh, Uncle Luke. With that said, everybody, I hope you tell someone that you love them. Share this video until we get back on here again with another video. I'll be back at you uh, very soon, and I appreciate you all. With that said, peace, love, and respect to you all. Take care. Thank you.